unapologetic supporter of, of, of the farm industry and farmers and horses and the Preakness, I think, is important. And I want to see a future for horse racing in Maryland. This is just a bad way to go about it. All right. We are, um, we've got some calls, so if you could just hang on. Uh, we've got some business to take care of. If you want to join the conversation, calls at 410-467-WBL. You're listening to Kendall and Bob Ehrlich Show. Pride of Baltimore 2 has been promoting the economic goodwill of Maryland and the Port of Baltimore for 20 years. On Saturday, October 11th, over a thousand friends and supporters of the ship and its mission will gather at the beautiful waterfront headquarters of the Vane Brothers Company for a grand 20th anniversary celebration. Prominent members of the Maryland business community and citizens from throughout the region will gather to commemorate Pride 2's two decades as global ambassador for our state. Show your support for Pride of Baltimore 2 and its mission by becoming a sponsor of this great anniversary event. Choose from a number of sponsorship levels that will offer your company maximum exposure surrounding the event. As a celebration sponsor, you'll have the pleasure of joining the captain for a private VIP reception aboard Pride 2, as well as many other benefits. Join fellow Maryland businesses in sponsoring Pride 2's 20th anniversary celebration on Saturday, October 11th. For information, call 888-557-7433. Play yourself play the Maryland Lottery. Watch and hear the winning numbers on WBAL-TV and radio. We are the home of the Maryland Lottery. Let yourself play and watch and listen. Kendall and Bob Ehrlich on AM 1090 WBAL. Welcome back to the Kendall and Bob Ehrlich Show. Uh, Senator Alex Mooney, I got uh, my husband, you know him, he's on the line, and Delegate Herb McMillan, President of Maryland Taxpayers Association. We are going to go right to the phones. We are going to go to Alan. Good morning, Alan. Hello. Hello, Hello. Alan. All right, good morning. You know, I, I wonder if the bigger issue is really uh, not so much slots. I mean, I mean, before this end of the show, I, I would have probably voted for the slots because, you know, I was looking at that as a way to, to kind of decrease what, what I feel is, feel is excessive taxation in this state. But, you know, of course, now I'm, I'm starting to wonder if that's really true. But I think that... Yeah, I think your premise is flawed. I, I think it's... I think it's just. I think the point we're making today. And listen, your 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 observation is very rational, and I would hope that would be the case. But all indications for the first two years are that's not true. Not in this it's administration. A, it's a new license to spend. Exactly right. So I guess the bigger question is, and assuming that most people in this state probably would be be like me, not so much 
wanting to play slots but hoping to decrease the level of taxation. What is the alternative? I, I mean, I think it's more of a rhetorical question. I don't really see... You know what? It's not a rhetorical question. It's the question, and I'm sure our guests have the same answer I do, which you elect more people to the legislature, Republicans and Democrats, who are willing to vote against tax increases and willing to rein in the size of government in the state of Maryland. You get to vote on that in two years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Alex, anything? I uh, couldn't, couldn't read more. Yeah. Okay, next we're going to go to Randy. Good morning, Randy. How are you? Good, thanks. I'm, I'm concerned about the, the, the precedent of adding the specific slots language into our state's foundational document, our Constitution. I'd like to hear what, what Delegate McMillan and Senator Mooney have to say about that. Yeah, we're going to let you go, Randy. We have a weird connection, so we're going to comment on that. Go ahead, guys. It's just, it's just Senator Mooney, it's just not the place for it. You don't put in a Constitution. What if one of the places don't work out? you got to do another constitutional amendment to remove a spot. We already had that in Southern Maryland. They put it in, they took it out. If there's a problem, you want to remove it, you're going to have to wait two years, go through a constitutional amendment. It doesn't make sense to do it this way. Even if you're for slots, this constitutional amendment makes no sense, and this is not the time to do it because you're going to feed wasteful government spending. No, I don't know. I just, to me, it's like uh, slot machine gambling just isn't right up there with free speech, freedom of religion, and freedom to associate for me. Uh, <laughs> this is something that, you know, that's like putting uh, liquor codes in the Constitution. Uh, that's that's what, not what the Constitution is for. The Constitution is special. It protects our rights. It shouldn't be used as a, a vehicle to uh, pass a piece of legislation that, quite candidly, the legislature was too afraid to vote on them. I was... Uh, Any and last words? You, you, you both uh, will... Uh, uh, excuse me. I didn't mean to... Uh, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I had to interrupt you at least once during the show. Thank you. I so I just wanted to make sure you felt right at home. <laughs> well, uh, I do got, feel at home. We've, we've got about 30 seconds. I was going to let these guys wrap it up, or they say you can, whatever it is. No, we have, we have rejected Herb's right. We have rejected this approach uh, during our tenure in Annapolis. This was brought up to us by the Democratic leadership. We said, no way, constitutional amendment. It's silly. It's, it's, it just does not belong in the Constitution of the state of Maryland. So I think our listeners got a lot of good information. No on the slots referendum. A vote, a vote for slots is rewarding higher taxes and wasteful government spending this year. Don't do it. All right. That's it. Thanks to all the callers, all the emailers. We'll get to you when we can. Thanks to Comptroller Peter Francho, Delegate Lou Simmons, and Dick Saucy, who called in. Uh, Maryland Taxpayers Association President Herb McMillan, thank you for coming in. Senator Mooney, we really appreciate it. Our great producer, Chris Kondrowski, thank you, thank you, thank you. Up next at 11.05 is Brian Kronberger, Brian Kronberger Financial Hour. Peter Schmuck at noon. Go Navy, go Maryland, go Cougars if we play, and go Go Raiders. Cougars! Go Pal Hawk.